I applied to 11 photo contests within the past 12 months and I got a cash prize and an exhibition out of one of them. And for another one, I got shortlisted as an emerging photographer. So today I want to share with you my personal routine of how I find these contests online, how I research them, how I craft a really good application to stand out from the crowd, and also my tools and hacks and routines that I use to craft the applications. And lastly, a really good mindset shift that helped me and continues to help me to overcome this kind of imposter syndrome and fear of failure and the feeling that my work is simply not good enough to apply to these photo contests. So let's get into today's video. The first problem with photo contests that I see is that you have to find out about them first to be able to apply and participate. But how do you do that? So for me, I mainly use four resources and two of them are online. So the first resource is Picter, the platform Picter, and specifically the Picter contests part. So Picter is a platform specifically made for photographers to log in, to create a profile, and then you can see all the upcoming photo contests that are happening, not only in your area, but globally. And the cool thing about the platform is that it tells you exactly the deadline, how much it costs to apply and all the criteria that you need to fulfill to send in an application. And the cool thing about this platform is it's completely for free. You only need to create a profile, log in, and you will constantly see what are the upcoming photo contests. So the second resource that I use is actually an Instagram profile and it's called for photographers only. So this platform is actually a paid platform for photographers and you can register and get sent like regular updates and newsletters about photo contests. But I have a hack for you. If you follow the Instagram profile, it will post all the contests that they have run it. And this is what I do. I'm not a member of the platform. I just follow them online on Instagram and I check in regularly to see which photo contests are coming up. And then I'm taking this information if I see a particular contest come up and then I put it into Google and I go directly onto the landing page of this particular contest and apply through there. So you don't need to be a member, but you can still benefit from this platform. And the last two resources that I use are specifically to my place where I live and my type of photography. So you will need to research these specifically for you, but I will still tell you what I need. So one of them is magazine subscriptions. So I have a magazine subscription to this local German magazine. It's called Photo News and I have a yearly subscription for them. And they have a section within the magazine that shows you exactly which contests are coming out. So research similar magazines in your country, in your area. And usually they have a section for contests and they will advertise contests sometimes even on their website. And the last resource that I use is being part of photo communities. So I'm part of a couple of photo communities through Facebook groups, but also through live meetups in Berlin, Germany. And these are helpful resources because often they also have an online newsletter that they are sending out with photo contests listed. So become a member of your local photo communities or your regional photo communities, sign up to photography newsletters, and you will get updates for photo contests through those things. All right, so step two in my process is once I have found all the photo contests, I will make sure to filter them and research them and create a Google document with all the deadlines coming up and the photo contests that I personally want to apply to. Because obviously time is a limited resource and you cannot apply to just anything and everything out there. You will lose money on that and you will lose time and it just doesn't make sense. So how do I filter for the right contests for me? 
I'm going to run you exactly through my criteria that I use. You can have different criteria, obviously, but hopefully you can take away something from the ones that I use to help you navigate this huge world of photo contests. So the first and very important one is, is the contest a free contest or is it a paid contest? And usually my preference will be to only participate in free contests with a few exceptions of really high quality, well-known contests that charge maybe a small fee, nothing higher than maybe 25 to $30 per entry and per entire entry, not just per image. And this is how high I will go. So my reasoning behind this is you are obviously trying to break into the artistic world and participate. And it doesn't make sense to spend a lot of money on contests to me. And another reason is that most of the serious contests that are really thinking about the photographer and want to encourage artistic work and for your work to be out there are contests that are not going to commercially benefit from you, the photographer. There is a few exceptions out there that will make sense, but you have to really screen those out and do your due diligence and research to make sure this is a serious contest. And this is my second criteria. Really look at the website of the contest and make sure this is a serious contest and not just some kind of commercial endeavor for something to promote their product or their platform or their gallery and actually they're just collecting money through those contest entries and not really giving anything back to the photographer. So do they have a good brand name? Do they have good exposure? What are you getting once you have won this contest? Are they giving out like exposure, cash prizes, publications? Are you receiving an exhibition? Really make sure to look at the contest, also look at the jury. How many times have they been holding this contest? Is it something well established or is it something new popping up that you cannot make sure you are actually going to benefit from it in the end? And the last point for this seriousness is, is there any hidden cost? So sometimes not only do you have to pay a fee to enter the contest, but once you win, they ask you to pay for producing your exhibition. And I'm kind of skeptical about these sort of contests that as the prize, you still have to invest money to be part of the winners of the contest. So stay wary and probably I, my advice would be kind of stay away from these type of contests. So the last criteria that I've used is does my work match the criteria of the contest? So often there is an age limit that you need to observe. There is like some sort of category. So say photojournalism. And if you work as street photography, obviously this is not going to fit. There might be also a regional limitation. So some contests are for Europe only, Asia only, US only, and so on. And another criteria to look out for is sometimes they are looking for work that is not older than this amount of years. And sometimes they're also looking for work that hasn't previously been published before. So if you have exhibited this work before or published in another magazine, the contest will not accept your submission. If you are getting value from this video so far, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can continue making videos just like this one and resources for you. Okay, step three in my process is once I have filtered out and screened out the right contests for me, I will take them and put them in a Google document. So this is just how I do it. I create this Google document and I input all the names of the photo contests and prizes in there. And I also include the links to the different platforms or submission websites for this particular contest. And then I also organize those contests by upcoming deadlines with the most urgent deadline at the top and then going down to the less urgent deadlines. This helps me personally stay organized. I can open up the Google document or I can also print it out and hang it on my wall to see which contest deadlines are coming up 
so I'm not missing any of the important deadlines that I want to participate in. So the next step in the process is to figure out what goes into the application for a specific contest or a submission. And usually you will need three main things. So the first thing you will need is obviously your work. So that could be a photo series or a single image. And if it is a photo series, it will need to be an edit of this photo series, usually limited to somewhere between six to 20 photos. If it's a contest for a book, you will obviously need your photo book ready for that. The second thing you need for most photo contests is some type of CV of your artistic career. So you could prep this by creating, again, a Google document, inputting all your achievements, your education, and everything you have done in your artistic career. And the third thing you will need for most contests is a short description of your project that you are submitting. So sometimes this will be speculative. So you are submitting a portfolio of your previous work and you are suggesting a new project that you want to work on once you win the contest, or it will be a description of the work that you are submitting. So say you're submitting a photo series about winter, you will need to describe your project, what it is about, why you made this work and why it is important to you. So the next step in my routine and in my process is going to be to create those resources. So you have them ready once the contest deadline is coming up and you just need to, you know, put them in the submission um, form or upload them to the submission website. And by applying to 11 contests for the past 12 months, I have figured out some really great resources that help me create these things more efficiently and to a higher standard. And I want to share them with you today so you can also benefit from these resources. So the first incredible tool that I use is helping me to create a cohesive edit of my photo series. So whether you're doing a portfolio for yourself or you are creating an edit for a photo series, you can use Miro, the platform. And this platform, you log in and it gives you a board where you can upload your images and then play around by moving the images. And you can create series, you can look at different combinations, you can move things around, do anything you would on a physical pin board. But this is like an online version of a pin board. It's super helpful. You can also collaborate with other people on there. You can invite like people to log in there and you can create edits together. And this is a really, really helpful resources to create series and portfolios as a photographer. So the second tool that I have been using to up level my applications is actually AI. So it's chat GPT, which can help photographers in so many different ways. And I don't see many people talk about this. So give this video a like if you want even more videos, maybe on specifically how AI tools can use photographers today. So how I personally use ChatGPT for my photo contest applications is that I use it to create my biography text, like a little about me paragraph. And I put in all the important facts just into simple sentences. And then I give it to ChatGPT and say, make this into a better text that sounds great in English, maybe for this specific context. And ChatGPT just rewrites my text and makes it better. It does the grammar checking, the spell checking, all of that. Obviously, English is not my first native language, if you didn't know, I'm German. So it really helps me to create my texts in the English language. And another way that I use ChatGPT is to create my project descriptions and project proposals. So I sometimes, you know, I'm faced with a blank page and this is a scary process to write something from scratch. 
So I just say, chat GPT, write me a proposal text of this is not many words, I don't know, 500 words on the topic of winter. And ChatGPT will write me a paragraph. And then I will not copy and paste this text, obviously, but I will draw inspiration from this text and use certain things to then write my own thing. And once I have written my own thing, I will input it into ChatGPT again and say, make it sound better, make it sound more professional, make it sound less conceited, make it sound more fun, whatever. And ChatGPT, I will kind of collaborate with ChatGPT as my text editor. So this is a cool hack. Another tool that really helps me out is whenever I'm not submitting through a platform like Picture, where you have like, you know, your little form that you just fill out, but you need a set of good looking PDF documents, say for your CV, your proposal, project proposal, or your project description, and like a portfolio and stuff like that. And I'm personally no InDesign wizard. I don't know about you, maybe you're good with InDesign, but I'm not. So I've been using Canva as my go-to resource and tool to create really good looking professional designed documents and resources for my applications. And this has helped me out tremendously. You can have a free subscription on Canva. I personally use the pro, the pay subscription on Canva because I use it for my YouTube channel as well. And it helps me out so much creating really good looking documents that are professional. So the next step that I want to talk about is a crucial one. And without that step, none of the previous ones will help you, I think. Because you have to be ready to apply to photo contests and start putting your work out there. And a mindset shift that has tremendously helped me personally suffering from imposter syndrome and constantly feeling like, oh, my work is not there yet. I'm not ready yet to submit to the contest is the following. You have to apply to a lot of contests to win some of them. So. There's a ton of contests out there and applying just to one or two contests is not going to cut it. So you really have to work the numbers. So this helps me because I know a single contest is not going to matter that much. It matters that I apply to several contests every month and to at least 10, 15, 20 contests every year, because when you work the numbers, the probability that you will win something at some point and get something out of some contests is going up. So really work the numbers and do as many applications as your time and your resources allow you to. Another mindset shift when it comes to contests is practice makes perfect. So you're not applying to win the contest. You are applying to practice applying to contests because let me tell you, apply to contests is an art and a routine in itself. And you will need to learn all the different hacks, all the different tools, all the different things to become better at editing your work, describing your work, describing yourself. And this is a continuous artistic practice and part of your artistic practice that really helps you build and build over the years. And another mindset shift that helped me is adding on to the last point, And that is realizing for yourself that winning a contest is not the only benefit that you are getting from your application and from your submission. So there's a ton of different benefits that you receive once you get into the practice of applying. So you get better at editing your work. You get better at describing your work. You also find out about the landscape of contests and the work that is out there. Because when you are researching the different contests, you will see like what types of works have won in previous years. What are other creators, other artists doing out there? What topics are they working on? And this will give you not only perspective on your own work, but it will also give you inspiration 
to create new work and better work. And adding on from that is whenever you enter into a contest, you will get to work in front of really important people. So because there's always juries within that contest and they are obviously like reviewing and assessing the work that is sent. So they will get more and more familiar with your work and with your name once you start regularly contributing and putting your work out there. And you never know where they will bump into you or see your work or maybe start following you on social media. So you don't have to win a contest for it to make sense for your work and your career and to better yourself in the process. All right, if you got value from this video, give it a thumbs up so I can continue making more informative videos like this one and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.